Hello there, this is Rahul. I hope you are doing good. And today we are going to discuss Kubernetes prop. And specifically, we are going to talk about three props. The first one is going to be liveness prop. Second is going to be readiness. And the third one is going to be the startup prop. First, we are going to see what is the significance of each prop. And in the second part, we are going to see the demo where we are going to configure each prop into our Kubernetes manifest. Let's start with our first prop, which is going to be our liveness prop. Now the question comes like, why do we need a liveness prop inside our Kubernetes cluster? So liveness prop is responsible for telling the Kubernetes cluster that Docker container needs a restart. But why do we need a restart? So suppose if there is a deadlock happening inside your Kubernetes cluster and Docker container cannot start, then for that reason, liveness prop is going to tell Kubernetes cluster that there is a deadlock happening and now you should restart the container. So that's the main responsibility of our liveness prop. All right, let's move forward and see what is the configuration which we need to put in for liveness prop. So here you can see this is the snapshot which I have taken from my Kubernetes manifest and this snapshot is for my liveness prop. And here these are the configuration which is needed for defining a liveness prop. We will go through each configuration in detail. Let's start with our first configuration parameter that is path and this is going to be your status health endpoint. Uh, this is just an example today which I am taking. That's why I have created only single rest endpoint that is hello. So in my whole application, there exists only one rest endpoint. But in your application, there might be multiple rest endpoint and one of them might be a health status. So please put this health status endpoint over here. Second parameter which we need to define is the port. So if any of your rest application is running, then it should have some port. So for my current example, I am running on a port 8080. So just replace the port number with some suitable port number of your application. Second, we have an initial delay second. So why do we need an initial delay second? Suppose you have started your Docker container, then the liveness prop initially or the first time is going to wait for 15 seconds. And then it is going to start checking for any kind of a deadlock. Then there comes the period second. So this is the regular interval. So that here I have defined 10 seconds. So each after the 10 second, it is going to check for any kind of a deadlock. So there is a difference in the initial delay second and the period second. So the difference is initial delay seconds is needed when you deploy your application for the first time. And then it is going to wait for the 15 second. And after that, it is going to regularly use the period second, that is 10 seconds, which we have defined. So it is going to regularly check uh, like if is there any kind of a deadlock which is happening or not. Don't worry, we are going to put this configuration inside our Kubernetes manifest and we are going to deploy a very simple application just to see how it works. But just to keep in mind, like these are the configuration which is needed for liveness prop. Uh, moving forward, we are going to see the next thing is readiness prop. And why do we need a readiness prop? When we talk about the readiness prop, then consider readiness prop as a doorkeeper for incoming traffic. Readiness prop is responsible for telling that this pod is ready to receive the traffic or not. So if the pod is not ready to receive the traffic, then readiness prop is going to tell Kubernetes cluster that this pod is not healthy. So please remove this pod from the load balancer. And if in case if this pod is ready and it is uh, ready to accept the traffic, then it is also going to tell Kubernetes cluster that please keep this pod into the load balancer. This pod is healthy and it can receive the traffic. So this is how the readiness prop act as a gatekeeper for the incoming traffic. Let's see the configuration of a readiness prop. And this is the screenshot or the snapshot I have taken from my Kubernetes manifest for the readiness prop. And if you can see, then all the parameters which we have defined for liveness prop is going to be the same for the readiness prop also. So here first we have defined path, second we have defined port, third we have defined initial delay seconds and the final one is going to be our period second. So these configuration parameters are also same as the liveness props. All right, the next prop we are going to talk about is the startup prop. In the previous two slides, we have seen the liveness prop, which is responsible for the Docker container and the readiness prop, which is responsible for this whole pod. But this startup prop is responsible for the application, which is deployed inside the Docker container. As you have might have imagined like this application, which is running inside the Docker container. So in my case, that is in Spring Boot application. So this application is the core of this whole setup. 
because we have created a docker container for that application and that docker container is running inside our pod and this pod is running inside our kubernetes cluster so if this application is not working then there is no point of keeping this container this pod or deployment of this pod so what happens is this startup probe is going to tell that this application has started successfully or not if this application has started successfully then you should start the liveness and the readiness prop but in case if this application is not able to start successfully then there is no point to start the liveness and the readiness prop so that's the main responsibility of our startup prop moving further let's see the configuration of our startup prop and here you can see this is the snapshot which i have taken from the kubernetes manifest for my startup prop and here there are two parameter which are same like path and the port but there is a one parameter which is failure threshold which is different from the liveness and the readiness prop so i'm just going to explain what is the failure threshold but uh, there is a one more configuration which is same as period second that is going to be the 10 second so this failure threshold is going to be the 30 second in this example which i have kept it over here and to understand this failure threshold let's head over to the kubernetes documentation and see over here so here you can see they have defined the startup prop also and they have kept the same settings like a 30 and the 10 30 for failure threshold and period second is going to be the 10 so what happens is like our application will wait for five minutes so how did they calculate the five minutes so they are going to multiply 30 with 10 and that comes out to be 300 seconds so if you calculate 300 seconds then that is going to be the five minute so that is the maximum amount of a time that the startup prop will wait for application to start and once the application has started after the five minute or in between the five minute then it is going to tell the liveness and the readiness prop that this application has started and now you can uh, proceed forward all right now we have seen the concepts of liveness readiness and the startup prop the next thing which we are gonna see we are gonna see the application code so for my current example i am going to take a spring boot application and then we are going to create a docker container but in your case you can take any application like node.js angular.js or python the only requirement you have you need to create a docker container of that application and once you create the docker container then you can deploy those application inside our kubernetes cluster so that's the only different step which i'm going to perform if i if you are not using the spring boot application otherwise rest of the steps are going to be the same here you can see this is my uh, class and here i have defined my rest endpoint and this is going to be my hello rest endpoint and this is the same hello path which i have explained in the liveness readiness and the startup prop and this rest endpoint is going to give me a message that is hello jehu k at us so this is the return message which i will be getting once i will deploy this application inside my kubernetes cluster so uh, for this example purpose, I have taken only one rest endpoint, but in your case, you can take as many as you need. So this is the application and we are just going to create a Docker container and we are going to push that Docker container into the Docker hub. Let's run some Docker command. And the first command which we are going to run is the Docker, uh, we are going to tag the image name. So this is the image name which we are going to tag our Docker image. So simply run this command and hit enter. And here you can see we are able to successfully take the image name. All right, I'll clear the screen. And the next command which we are going to run is we are going to again tag the image name. So this was the previous image name which we have created. And now we are going to tag with the actual Docker Hub repository name. I'm just going to explain you. So head over to your browser and head over to Docker Hub. So this is my Docker Hub. And if you go back to the dashboard of my, of my Docker Hub, then this is my uh, repository. Rahul Vag Chehu as Spring Boot. So this is the name which I just want to keep it because otherwise I won't be able to push my uh, repository or my Docker Hub image. So this is the uh, repository uh, name for my Docker Hub image or the Docker Hub repository. And whenever I want to push, so if you'll see the command over here, so we need to supply my uh, username along with my repository name and the tag name. So this is the tag name we have just tagged it so we in the first command we have already created our tag name all right so here you can see uh, this is the command docker tag and this is the first tag name which we have assigned and this is my actual docker hub repository name so this is the command which we we want to run 
and we have tagged it. Now we need to push this Docker image to the Docker Hub. So this is the command Docker push and followed by your actual complete tag name, which should be uh, similar to the Docker Hub. So this is my command and simply you need to hit enter. And here you can see we are able to successfully push our new image to the Docker Hub repository. So here you can see uh, the last push was one year ago. If I refresh the page, then it should uh, show me the latest time. And here you can see a few seconds ago. So we have updated our Docker Hub repository. And why I showed this step? Because uh, this is the Docker image which we are going to deploy, deploy inside our Kubernetes cluster. So this, this is the way you should do it. Before we jump into the Kubernetes cluster, there is a one more thing which I need to show it to you and that is our Kubernetes manifest. So here you can see uh, on my editor on the left hand side, this is my YML which I am going to use for deployment. So there are two things which I am going to perform over here. First, I am going to create a Kubernetes deployment of my Spring Boot application and then I am going to create a service for that. And in the service, I'm just going to explain, uh, expose it to the port 8080 using the node port. All right. So next thing here, this is the image name. And this is the same image name which I have defined uh, or which from which I'm pulling my Docker image. So this is the Docker Hub repository name, which I have already shown to you. And we have recently pushed the Docker image. All right. Uh, next thing over here, if you'll notice, this is my port on which my application is running. That is 8080. And apart from that, these are the important thing that is readiness, liveness and the startup prop. So these are the three props which I have already defined inside my Kubernetes manifest. And that specifically I have defined into the deployment. So remember, you need to define this uh, uh, liveness, readiness and the startup prop into the deployment manifest. Uh, it is not going to be defined under service. So service is going to be pretty much simple. We are just going to expose it on a port 8080 using the node port. So we don't need to define these liveness, readiness and startup prop into our service uh, manifest of Kubernetes. And along with this, I am going to share the GitHub repo. So this is my GitHub repo of whole project. So where you will find the source code as well as the Kubernetes manifest. So in case if you need to make a change, so just change this Docker Hub repository name with your application. So that's why I have said like you need to create a Docker container. And once you create the Docker container, container, use this manifest and just change this image name and it should work for your application also. And also you can change this name and app name also. So these are like a user defined names, which I have kept it over here. So you can keep any name of your choice. And also you need to change it into the service also, because it is going to use the same name in the service. So you need to update these names also in case if you want to change it. Let's head over to the terminal. And this is my Kubernetes cluster, which I have already set up and which you can verify by running command kubectl get nodes. So here there are a couple of nodes which is up and running inside my Kubernetes cluster. So I'll clear it. So the first thing, first of all, we need to check if there is any previous deployment which is there or not. So I can check it with the command kubectl get deployments. And here you will see uh, no resource found. That means our Kubernetes cluster is empty. There is no active deployment. And similarly, we need to check the service also. So the command is kubectl get service. And here you can see there is only one service, which is the default Kubernetes service, which is up and running. And apart from that, there is no any other service which is up and running. All right. And along with that, I have already copied my Kubernetes manifest that is K as a Spring Boot YML. So that I have already copied inside my Kubernetes cluster. So that's the only YML which you need to deploy your Spring Boot application. So you can run the cat command also on this manifest. Uh, it might be possible that this name is different for this YML and the uh, I have shown it on a GitHub, but it doesn't matter actually. So I'm just going to show the content of this YML. So here you can see it is the same thing. So here is the kind deployment and the, this is my Docker repository name from where I'm pulling the Docker image. Here I have the readiness, liveness and the startup prop. And here we have the service pod or the service uh, manifest for Kubernetes. Okay, I'll clear it and I'm just going to run the command kubectl apply 
f and the name of my manifest so that's the only command which i need to run and it will deploy my application using the docker container it is going to check the liveness readiness as well as the startup prompt so simply hit enter and the next command which we are gonna run is the watch x kubectl get all so here this command will keep on refreshing in every two seconds and it will just keep on telling the status and here you can see the status is running but the pods are zero slash one that means our pod are still getting started so we'll just keep monitoring it all right so here you can see our pod is up and running and it took around 100 seconds to start both of our pods and similarly our services uh, is also exposed on node port this is the cluster ip and uh, this is our deployment and we have a two replicas that's why there are two deployments so uh, our application has been deployed uh, inside our kubernetes cluster and there are two replicas which is up and running okay let's verify our rest endpoint by accessing it uh, with the cluster ip so the command which you need to run is the kubectl get service and here you can see this is our service name which is uh, up and running on a node port and this is our cluster ip so i'm just going to copy this cluster ip over here and i'm just going to use the command curl i'm just going to paste the cluster ip along with the port that is 80 and then i'm just going to run the hello so here you can see this is the output which I have got like Jehu Ketas and this is what I was expecting. Uh, you might be wondering why I have used the port 80 because uh, I'm inside my Kubernetes cluster so I can use the uh, cluster IP along with the default port that is 80 and then I can access the rest endpoint that is hello. But if I jump outside of my Kubernetes cluster then uh, this is the browser and this is the external IP or my virtual machine IP. So here I'm just going to use the port 32093 so you can see over here so once i run the kubectl get service then you get the port 32093 so i can use this port to access the same service over here so if i just refresh it then here you can see i'm getting the same output so this is how you can access uh, your service outside of your kubernetes cluster using your virtual machine ip or the external ip if you deploy into aws so with that, we conclude like how to use or how to set up the Kubernetes prop that is uh, readiness, uh, liveness and startup prop. And if you're interested into the similar content, then keep following this channel where I keep on posting the similar content on DevOps like Kubernetes, Helm Chart, Docker, Terraform on a weekly basis. And also you can find me on the web with the name jhook.com. I'll put the link uh, into the description section. So all the guides which I generally use into the demo session are generally available on my blog. So I'll put the link into the description section. So feel free to use the code which I generally share into the lab session. So see you into the next session of uh, DevOps till then. Bye bye and take care.